Hey addicts, we're back here for The Walking Dead episode 15, The Calm Before, and oh man, <laughs> I'm excited to talk about this one. Uh, I'm going to make this recap really quick because I'm sure you guys want to get into talk about the, the whole Pike scenario. So uh, just briefly want to mention that, you know, we start the episode, we get a look at these uh, couple that's been at the hilltop for a while supposedly and they get hit on the road by Alpha and this is basically Alpha gearing up to get ready for the fair uh, and then we get to see that uh, back at the fair uh, Ezekiel kicks it off with a really nice speech everybody's communicating really well having a fun time the communities actually reunite sign the charter that uh, Tara gave or I guess you Jesus gave to Ezekiel uh, but they are concerned about the whispers and, you know, what impact keeping Lydia safe is going to cause for the communities. And they're afraid that Hilltop is going to suffer, you know, the first blow. So they make precautions to kind of deal with that. They're going to send a group of soldiers to go and basically defend Hilltop from any uh, attack, you know, show that there is a united front between all the communities. Uh, and then as they're leaving, we get to see that um, on the road, they find the couple that was presumably taken out by Alpha. And then their group split at this point. One continues to go to the hilltop. And then there's another group that decides to follow the tracks to see if they can find any survivors. Uh, this group is like Daryl, Carol, uh, Michelle. Well, it's basically all these people you see right here. Uh, you know, you got... Daryl, Michonne, Yumiko, uh, and Daryl, or what if I already said, whatever, you can see him in there, you probably remember if you watched it. So, uh, they're going, and of course, it's kind of an ambush, they get surrounded, and that leads to Alpha having a sit down with Daryl. Uh, back at the, you know, the fair, we get to see a lot of, uh, you know, heartwarming, fun, little moments, there's a lot of callbacks uh, to stuff, uh, you know, to the comic and like other characters, and uh, previously in the show, all of that I really like. I'm not going to go too much in depth, like I said, because I'm going to try to keep this one shorter, but uh, all of that I found uh, really cool, uh, especially how it looked at the fair. But anyway, we get to see that once um, Alpha decides that she's going to take Daryl to show, you know, the ace up their sleeve, uh, they take them to this, it almost looks like the same place that... Uh, like the quarry that they had a couple of uh, seasons ago. It's not It's not that, but it just reminded me of that. But, you know, she shows him the ocean of the dead that uh, they have stored up and is their secret weapon. And, you know, basically lays down the rules of like, hey, you know, my daughter doesn't matter anymore. We don't care uh, about, you know, interacting with you. Just stay out of our territory. We even marked a border, you know, to the north to, you know, show you <laughs> that you don't want to come this way. And... You know, obviously it's left very ambiguous. Uh, Daryl's just like, all right. And then that leads to them walking up and then seeing the, the, the pikes. Uh, and they play with time in the episode. You know, we get to see that, you know, Alpha does make it to the fair. She's walking around gathering information. She even interacts with Lydia. And, uh, you know, they kind of play with that time going, you know, earlier in the day and then later in the day. Obviously, uh, later in the day is when we see... Uh, Alpha back at her whisper camp uh, to see, you know, Betas kidnapped uh, these other people. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to go into, you know, my uh, review, I guess, or just my impressions of it. I really liked this episode. There was a lot of great things about it. I think they did the death scene really great, uh, the reveal. Uh, I think, uh, well, let me just go through the, the good, all the good first. So, uh, you know, like I said, the little moments at the fair, I really like that. There's a lot of callbacks, you know, especially even, you know, uh, back to when, uh, season three, when they were at the prison and stuff like that. I always loved that little bit. I mean, you even got like little, uh, I guess you'd call them Easter eggs or something like that. You know, it's like, uh, Shiva statue up sitting next to where uh, Ezekiel was giving his speech. Uh, and then all sorts of other stuff. I'm not going to go into detail, but I did really like that. Uh, the fair, like I said, it was a, a lot bigger scale than I thought they were going to do. So that was nice to see. And I also liked how it just looked. It, it just had the, you know, like in the comic, you know, you saw it, but I don't think you can really get the same scope as it was in the show. So it's just, you know, translated in a different way that makes you appreciate that a lot more. Uh, but then, uh, believe it or not, something that uh, I want to highlight as the good in this episode was the speeches. There's two speeches that you get. 
that I think are really great. The beginning one with uh, Ezekiel, again, is kind of giving you that like callback, you know, to past relationship, you know, past motives, uh, you know, uh, giving honor to Rick and Carl for what they've established. And then also, you know, pressing forward to the future. And uh, that's a great way to start off the fair, you know, start the happy times, give, you know, kind of this reconnecting of people. And then, we, you know, you see later in the episode, Alpha trying to destroy that and then sending back a message that she hopes is going to, you know, dis lead despair in people's hearts. And you actually get to see that's like the opposite reaction. Uh, you know, Sadiq in his speech, you know, kind of gives a reigniting of like them sticking together, you know. So I, I really like um, both of them. I think, you know, the contrast, but then, you know, the same points that they're trying to make, I think it, it works really well. Um, another one, like I said, the, the border, like revealing the, the pikes, like this shot in particular, I love that shot. There's also, you know, another one here where you get to see them across. I, I really like that as well here, the bigger shot with that. But uh, yeah, I liked that. Uh, the other big thing I think they did, I, I, it was like we didn't get it in the comic, but, and there still is like a plot hole technically going this route, but I still really like it. Uh, and that is like the ending remix that we get, you know, we know that since Sadiq was there and they actually left somebody alive, we didn't get that in the comic. But we also see that, you know, in his telling, like they put up a fight, they like kidnapped them alive. And then something happened to where, you know, they kind of got out a little bit. But since they were surrounded, they, you know, they just fought till like they killed them. Uh, and I really like that because, you know, you would expect that these characters, you know, the survivors, they would, you know, they wouldn't go down without a fight. And so that was something really cool. And I think, you know, how they impacted that and magnet, you know, magnify that with uh, Sadiq's speech, I think works really well. The only thing, you know, obviously is like, you know, you still have this thing. It was kind of unbelievable in the comic that Alpha was not, I mean, you know, her infiltrating the fair is a bit more believable because not everybody knows everybody at the communities, especially uh, given how they did it in the show where they haven't really seen each, uh, you know, every individual member for years. But in the comic, you know, it was still like, well, how did she, you know, kill these people and then, you know, get them out, <laughs> get their heads out. But in this one, it still suffers from that a little bit because it's like, okay, you know, killing them is one thing because they have their guard down. I'm sure there's some little blind spots, you know, when the fair is going on. And, and I guess people just bat an eye if you just had a, a bag, you know, a really big bag, you know, that's going to be filled with hugs. But, you know, in this, it's like, well, how did they get them out without people noticing when they were alive? You know what I mean? Uh, so that's like something, but I still really like the way that they remixed that. I think it was good. Uh, now, getting into the bad, there is... Like, this is more minor stuff, so again, you know, this kind of magnifies how much I like the episode, and some of it is kind of, like, opinion-based, but I still want to highlight it anyway. So, like, uh, one thing was, um, there's a really cool scene that, like I said, you know, uh, this group gets ambushed when they are trying to find, uh, you know, the people that got sacked on the road, and uh, one thing that I really like, too, is that the Whispers send walkers first, and, you know, they're having to kind of be um, cautious because they don't know if there's whispers mixed into the group. So they can't just make a beeline to run away like they normally could if there was if they said there was too many. So they have to sit there and fight. Uh, but the thing that I didn't like about this is that uh, they zoom in on their faces when the action is starting to get really interesting. They even have a wide shot that it's like, oh, man, this looks so cool. And then, but then they zoom in when they're actually, you know, taking them out. It's just one of those things where, I mean, I get why maybe because of like budget or just like you don't want to do the special effects or something. But still, though, I think that's like a, I mean, it's the whole reason why you're making this show. So uh, I didn't like the, the zoom in shots. I've never been a fan of stuff like that for action scenes. But uh, yeah, that was a little disappointing. But then you get to see also... Um, I'm kind of mixed on this. Uh, Alpha speaking to Lydia at the fair. Uh, you know, as soon as I saw Lydia pulling up for the fair, I was like, okay, this is going to be really hard to believe that she, like, if Alpha is there and also other whispers, that Lydia doesn't notice a single one of them. Obviously, there's a lot of people there, but still, though, it's like you're walking around and feel like if you saw somebody's face, you would recognize them uh, or at least question it. But, you know, we get Alpha directly talking to Lydia and confronting her. And I do like the fact that Lydia does seemingly 
go to Ezekiel right after she gets done talking to Alpha and lets him know about the situation. But still though, I feel like, <sighs> you know, I think she would know uh, that they probably wouldn't kill Alpha on the spot. They'd probably take her prisoner, at least at the beginning. I mean, I'm sure they maybe would kill her, her, her later, but you know, I feel like there's really no reason why she didn't go with her threat that she told Alpha and just screaming her head off and have somebody come. So that's like still one of those things that's iffy for me. Uh, it's more of like an opinional thing that I, I just didn't like that as much, but it's like, it, it, you know, if I go back, it probably grow on me because it's like half and half. It's like, you know, I like the interaction because, you know, it does show that Alpha, you know, is struggling with that, uh, you know, being that dominant, not showing any weakness. Uh, so that's, that's a cool play on that. But still, though, you know, I don't necessarily know if they need that. But that highlights another thing real quick because uh, I thought that was great highlighting that she just killed some guy for seeing her shed a single tear. Love that, because, <laughs> uh, you know, that just goes to show, you know, again, how brutal she is, and, uh, I mean, we didn't see it on the show, but, you know, kind of shows how she doesn't really have a boundary for killing, kind of like the governor was uh, in the comic, but, anyway, that's a different topic. Uh, another one of the um, bad things is dealing with the Pikes. I really like the reveal, I really like what they did, and, to be honest, it's like something like, you know, I don't need it changed, but it is kind of odd on um, some of the picks they made. I, I, to be honest, I was really surprised that, you know, we didn't see Rosita or somebody in that triangle, whether it be, you know, Rosita, Eugene, or Sadiq. I would prefer Rosita. Uh, and then uh, I was also really shocked, you know, we didn't see Ezekiel, which I'm happy with because I would love to see Ezekiel more. Again, you know, it's like one of those things uh, the silhouette that his head would provide would be really cool, but, you know, I, I like Ezekiel, really glad that I didn't do, but it, what surprised me is that we didn't get at least one from uh, Magnus Group. I was hoping there was at least going to be one. In the comic, I believe there was at least one, and, uh, yeah, I think that would have helped a lot, especially because with Magnus Group, you know, they just got there. Of course, you know, they've had some moments with uh, the group, I'm sure like Connie would probably be the one that uh, argues the most to stay. But you know, in the comic, it made a little bit more sense that you know Magna and them they didn't really have much ties here yet, and so they're like you know if they see a war they just bounce. But you know because of what happened that one of them ended up being on the pike, they're like no, this is our fight too. So you know with this, I'm interested to see if uh, Magna's group is going to be like we should just go. You know, since we didn't suffer any losses, you know, uh, count our blessings and just leave, or uh, if they're going to be full heartedly into that. So I'm looking forward to that. But again, I thought that was a weird choice. The other thing, too, that I think people could probably get a little bit more is the fact that Henry was on the Pikes. Uh, it's not that, you know, it's like he's a he's not a big character, so I, I didn't really care. But uh, at the end of the day, but I think it is an odd choice because, you know, like, you know, you look back and you're like, what's the point of having Henry and Lydia get, I mean, I know, okay, let me rephrase that, because I know why, because they want to build that so then, you know, you feel the loss or, you know, the impact of this event with him being on there because of everything that he's gone with, with Lydia and then, you know, everything else. But, you know, again, it's like, they could have remixed that in a way where Lydia gets the same motivation or connection in a different way. So, I don't know, it's just really odd, but, you know, again, it's it's a fine thing. I would say out of all the people, you know, there's a, a couple of, I would say, actually, there's probably most, because we get 10 uh, deaths, and I would say maybe four of them you'd care about. Uh, the rest of them you probably wouldn't bat an eye to, especially some of the newer people. Uh, or at least, you know, you may be like, oh, well, that's a shame, but, you know, you're not going to be like, why? So... Uh, but to be honest, the only one I really, uh, was surprised and actually cared about was Enid. Uh, that was, uh, that was, uh, probably a heavy blow, not only because, you know, she's, um, a medical, uh, person, you know, helping with, uh, their wounds and stuff like that that they have to deal with, but, you know, just because she was such a cool and capable character. Uh, Tara, you know, that's another one that was, uh, a big one that... I, to be honest, it's it's about time. Tara has, I, I don't know why, uh, <laughs> Tara has sticked around this long, but I will say I'm interested to see what the, it's going to do for the story because, 
Hilltop has just gotten hit so hard with, uh, you know, with loss. You know, they just dealt with Jesus being killed and now Tara and, you know, uh, Maggie is gone for the time being, which, uh, but to be honest though, Tara kind of deserved her head on that pike when she signed her name as the Hilltop leader instead of just signing for Maggie. <laughs> so but at least that's how I feel. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's a really good episode. You know, minor complaints, very minor. But, uh, you know, and obviously there's a little bit of plot hole, but I think they did this really well. And I'm actually looking forward to the last episode, uh, which next episode, uh, if you guys don't know, we get a, like a, it's like a blizzard and it's actually, here, let me pull this up real quick because I wrote a couple things that we get to see in the uh, in the preview here. So we get to see that uh, a blizzard comes in and it's, you know, wreaking havoc, I'm assuming, on like their crops, you know, and their supplies are dwindling down. The kingdom falls, or at least, you know, that uh, they are ran out of their supplies, so they're high-tailing it to one of the other communities to kind of... Uh, uh, lay low for the winter, you know, just bundle up for the winter. Uh, you know, the weather and rations looks like they're going to force people to go past the borders. And uh, I like, you know, the little bit of dialogue we got in the preview where it's like, you know, that's not our borders. They made, that's their rules. So, uh, you know, potentially going to see, you know, the, uh, the war is about to have its official spark. So I'm uh, really looking forward to that. You know, we've never seen snow on the show before. We have seen snow in the comic of like once way back in the day and I think you know having zombies in the snow is just such a cool drop back you know there's such a contrast that you could do that uh, I'm really looking forward to that but not only you know the you know setting aside the zombie aspect just you know these people it's really hard to live in like the wilderness or you know without certain things uh, when it gets to that really harsh weather so I'm really looking forward to how that's going to play and you know exactly whether stuff they're going to have to deal with besides, you know, potentially like zombies or the whispers out there, which, uh, you know, that may bring a problem. It's like, well, if the whispers are nomadic and they live in like the forest are <laughs> like, uh, how are they going to survive there? Are they just going to die of frostbite? Uh, so yeah, but anyway, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut up, uh, because I want to keep this semi short, but let me uh, know what you guys thought of the, of the episode. I thought there was a lot of little stuff that I didn't mention that I really liked. Uh, so you know, if you want to talk about that or whatever, or any other stuff, uh, I'd be more than happy to talk to you guys in the comments. But anyway, guys, that'll conclude this review, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.